Hi, this is Peter Davis from Jigsaw Trading and this is a short presentation on when the markets get too thick. Uh, this presentation is mostly aimed at the guys from Top Step. We did some webinars at Top Step in January and a lot of the traders at Top Step probably hadn't looked at order flow before. Uh, they're now looking at order flow and the period that they've been looking at order flow for the first time was absolutely awful. Now it wasn't just an awful time for order flow traders, generally speaking, those first few weeks in February, we've had some of the, the smallest range days on the ES we've seen outside of the summer holidays. So it's been a pretty tough time, and I guess a lot of the guys at Top Step are looking at order flow now and scratching their heads and kind of wondering if this all makes sense at all. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at uh, a couple of other things that we didn't talk about in the first three webinars uh, to give you some a bit more confidence in what to look for uh, when the markets get thick or rather when they return to normal again. Now we looked at reversals in the first three webinars and we looked at the way that when a reversal occurs we have a move down, we then see absorption or we see the sellers fade away and then the buyer starts to jump in and we get a move up. Now that's still valid and that still holds but what I want you to do is instead of thinking of a swing down and a swing up, I want you to put another picture in your mind. And the picture I want you to have in your mind is of a barbell. Okay. Now, the barbell, we know, is thin in the middle and thick and heavy at the outsides. And that is actually what we expect from the market. Okay, so when a reversal occurs, we're probably coming down, when, we, when we're moving down, we're coming down from some other area uh, where we've had a reversal. So we've had this area of absorption up here, and now we're taking a move down. So one of the characteristics of a nice move down, of a decent move down, of most moves down, is that they will be relatively light in terms of uh, trade volume at each level. So as we move down the bidders won't be very aggressive, the bidders won't be absorbing orders and uh, I don't like to use absolute numbers but these are typical numbers for the ES when the ES um, is in kind of normal mode. So we're going to see 1100 hit into the bid, tick down, 500 hit into the bid, tick down, 700, 450, 900, 800, those are the kind of numbers we're going to see to tick down through each bid. Now while that's happening on the other side, on the offer side, you're going to see very relatively little and mostly because, um, you know, primarily we've got sellers hitting into the bids and taking the bids out. We're not going to see a lot of activity on the offer side. So what happens? We make a move down, we make a move down on relatively thin volume and then we start to see absorption. So this area here, 4,000, 3,800, 400, this is absorption. Now one of the things you're going to notice is when you get to that level you're always going to have uh, two-sided trading. You're never going to have just absorption, just trading on this side. This is going to take as much time at these three levels as it did to come down to all these levels. And of course as you know the more time that trades the more trades you see on both sides. So anyway we've got this thin level we move down and then we get to the other end of our barbell where it's thick and we see all this action. Okay. Now at this point, what do we have? Okay. We have some sellers here. We had these sellers here. They're very happy uh, with the way the market's going right now, as are all of these sellers that came down here. Now as we get to here, these sellers that sold into here, they're late. Okay. They're late to the party. Okay, so they're selling at what is potentially a low. So those sellers, when they see the market move down and they see the absorption at that level, they're going to be a little bit nervous. Okay. Now, of course, these sellers aren't just sellers. They're selling to people on the bid who are buying. And also we have buyers over here. Now, those buyers, those people who are buying, they have seen the market move down towards them. And they're also going to be a little bit nervous. Okay. So what we have here at the end of this barbell is what we call 
a PPP, a potential puke point. Now, puking is a lovely term I heard from American traders, uh, some prop traders and some pit traders. And uh, it's what you and I would call getting stopped out, uh, but they call it puking out. Okay, so at this point, we've got a bunch of late sellers that sold at what is potentially a bottom. If that market pu pushes down, what do we expect those sellers to do? Okay, they're probably going to be quite happy. But if the market pushes up, those sellers are not going to be very happy and they're probably going to get out of the way in a hurry. And the same for the buyers. If that market pushes down now, those buyers are going to get away, get out of the way pretty quick. Now, not all of the buyers and sellers are going to get out of the way because some of them are, you know, getting in for longer term positions. But in the grand scheme of things, enough will get out of the way to power uh, the next move. So let's just consider when the buyers bail out. Okay. So when the buyers bail out, we've got two sets of buyers here. We've got the buyers that bought, the buyers on the limit side who bought these contracts from the sellers and we've also got the buyers who tried to put market orders in to push the market up. Now as the market goes down, the buyers are going to see that and they're going to start to bail. And what we're going to see again, we're not going to see a thick area. So we're going to be uh, another move where the, the market's uh, got fairly low volume at each level. So it's kind of an extension of the bar and our barbell. Now the neat thing about this is that these um, these ends of the barbell, where the weights are on the barbell, these thick areas, um, what you will see in the market time and time again is an area where there is a lot of trading, you're going to see a lot more trading again. So when we look at this, we have this move down, this push down here. If I was looking to go into the market short, the area to go short is as you come up to here. Now the reason you do that is because as the market comes back, retrace, it's going to get to this area and it's going to be thick. Okay, It's going to struggle to get through that area. So if you put a short order in, you can have a stop here, but your target is going to be 5, 6, 7 or 8 ticks down. Okay, now So we're doing that. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at a market move down. We're looking at buyers absorbing the selling. And then the buyers bailing. And when the buyers bail, you want to see the market move down, not just one or two ticks. When the market moves down from this this thick area, you're not just looking for it to move down one or two ticks. You're looking for it to put in five, six, seven, eight tick move. And then you can be fairly confident that if it comes back up to this this thick area, it's a good risk reward uh, to place a trade. Now, if the sellers bail. Okay. Now what we're looking at here, we're looking at the, the quantity here on the way down. Then we see the absorption. And then what we'll generally see, if the sellers are going to start to bail out, we'll start to see some volume building up over here before we see the push up. But again, what's happening here is we have a lot of people that have sold late here. Uh, the buyers start to get more aggressive and more aggressive through market orders here. And the sellers, they pull away from the limit orders, and again, the market pops up. Now, when the market pops up, our first obstacle, and perhaps our first scale-out point, is this area up here where we saw uh, the last set of absorption. Because we know that this area in the middle, this area here, there wasn't a lot of contracts firing off in that area. There's not a lot of people positioned in that area. That's a thin area. We're going to get to chew through that fairly easily. The first potential stopping point is up here where we have this thick area here. Okay, so that's kind of the ideal scenario. Now, one of the things about this, one of the things you don't uh, fade all absorption is because this is a cycle that goes over and over again. So, whereas the, you know, most of the reversals you see absorption, at all absorption points you don't see reversals. So, this is why. We're telling you that if you're going to use these techniques, it is always good to have some method of analyzing the market outside of order flow so you've actually got some good locations to trade off. So when you come down here and you see this absorption, if this is an area of support, then yes, 
this is actually a good area to take along. If this is just in the middle of the day's range, then it's not such a good area to take along because you don't know if the sellers are going to push through and the buyers are going to bail out or if the buyers are going to push up and the sellers are going to bail out. But when you combine this uh, with some good analysis of the market structure, then it makes sense to take a trade when you see the absorption. Now obviously, we also talked about less aggressive trades where we see the absorption and we see the buyers come in here. So that's why we've got the 6,000, 1,600 here. This is the buyers coming in. You get in at a worse price. You've still got four or five uh, ticks below you of risk. Uh, but you've got a clean run to the upside where you've got this area where there wasn't a lot of trading. So you know you're in a thick area. If you get in at this point, you shouldn't just dumb, move straight through these um, these four these three levels here very quickly. It should take time to chew through there if you're wrong, uh, giving you time to kind of finesse a, a, an exit. Uh, but above you, you've got this thin area that should be easy to get through. So that's a good trade. Now. What does all this have to do with what we've been seeing over the past few weeks? Well, what we've been seeing over the past few weeks is a dumbbell that's rather overloaded with weights. And we've been seeing market move up, print 10,000 contracts, move down a few ticks, print 8,000 contracts, move down a few more ticks, print 15,000 contracts. It's been thick at each level. And from an order flow perspective, you don't really have a good handle on where, first of all, everything is relative, right? So if I'm getting 10,000 contracts per level and I now get a level that's 100,000, okay, I can say then this level is a potential puke point. You know, buyers are going to bail or sellers are going to bail. But if it's thick like this, all the way up and down, you really, it's a coin toss basically. You really don't know. You really don't have a good handle on where people might be getting out of position. So that's really uh, all I wanted to talk about today, just to give you an idea of some other things, another way to look at the market, to look at the order flow, and to kind of understand conceptually what we've been seeing over the past few weeks and why it is so difficult. Uh, as usual, if you've got any questions, uh, send me an email at peterdavies at jigsawtrading.com and good luck in your trading.